Greetings. This video, uh, well, I'm not going to talk about the things that I talked about in my last video. I made my point. I'm not going to retract it. <clears throat> uh, obviously, a lot of people think uh, or thought I'm being jealous. Actually, the term is envious. This is often confused with jealousy, but I do like to be semantically accurate. Uh, jealousy is not the same thing as envy. It's not identical, at least. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm not going... People are entitled to their, their thoughts and opinions. They think I'm an arrogant, intellectual snob, whatever. I couldn't really give a rat's ass, unsubscribe, whatever. And um, <clears throat> uh, all claims of arrogance to me, to the contrary, notwithstanding, this video is not about really anything MGTOW related. Um, I'm calling upon you in my own ignorance, see, I concede when I don't know something, to uh, help me out with something, in, either in a comment section or if you have a channel uh, and you want to make a video about it, I would really appreciate it, and uh, I would definitely give you the thumbs up for it. Uh, basically, um, I'm not an engineer, I'm not a physicist, uh, and I don't know enough, or I just know too little about the subjects to uh, to understand all precisely what the limitations are regarding flight. So this video, I'm out, it's more an appeal. So. I've made the observation to myself time and again as someone who flies rather frequently, somewhat frequently, more frequently than people who never leave their uh, homestead, that you know we've been stuck with you know Boeing 40, 747s and to varying degrees and different kinds of models for you know, 40 years plus. And I did have the privilege of flying in the Concorde once, but you know it constantly, it constantly occurred to me, um, or has done, has constantly occurred to me, occurred to me throughout uh, years of, of traveling, you know, why are we still flying in these ridiculous subsonic clunkers? Now, uh, I, and, okay, obviously I think it's an issue of energy, of fuel, dependence on fossil fuels. That's probably my, my, the limit of my understanding, and since I'm not an aerospace engineer, I actually happen to know one that I game with sometimes, but he, he thinks it's, well, he's, it's not even his specialty, so this is just such a specialized area. Basically, my question is, what is in, in your, not opinion, but in your area of knowledge, if you actually have knowledge about this, and it's very trendy these days to pretend to know things you don't know. I, I'd never do that, actually. There's certain things I know to varying degrees, some things I know a great deal about, other things, you know, ask me a history, question about the history of the English language, I know an incredible amount of that. I know a lot about evolutionary biology, uh, if you start asking me about aerodynamics, I know very little about that. And so I, I'm just not going to make a comment and say, oh, this is the reason. Why are we still stuck in the large majority with, well, no, we're completely stuck in a commercial sense with subsonic uh, aircraft. Uh, as someone who realizes that fly, flying is a necessary evil, but also despises it, the longest flight I've been in uh, was 15 plus hours excursions to Africa from North America. I... Um, you know, and I, and the one reason why I've also never vis visited uh, some of my brothers in in Oceania, uh, that is uh, Australia, and New Zealand. Well, Australia has all the poisonous animals. Is I don't want to fucking stay in a plane for a goddamn hour. So it seems, yeah, there there's a problem with fuel. And um, a friend of mine who's quite well versed in solar energy, I didn't know this, explained that the, there are real concrete limitations to the amount of solar energy. Uh, I think he said somewhere in the, the, the department of 100 watts uh, energy output you can get, even if solar energy uh, harnessing gathering were to be optimized. And then the, 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 the aerodynamic structural problems I'm, I know nothing about. I'm not, I can't even really grasp them unless people, someone explain them um, as to a non-engineer. Uh, but I do sometimes see uh, certain theoretical discussions, and I know that the European Union is sort of financing super so something something supersonic, or they're working on different projects. There are even theoretical discussions of hypersonic aircraft that would essentially allow you to fly from London to Sydney in in an hour's time, uh, and they would they would be uh, propulsion uh, powered. I think I think. I'm trying to remember the exact term. Hi sorry, hydrogen propulsion, propulsion powered. Yeah, you know, if any one of my viewers, or if you happen to be an engineer or just uh, an intensely interested amateur, who understands a lot about aerodynamics as well as the pro problems with fuel consumption, as well as the economic issues, things that I just don't know enough about, and I know very little about, and you want to take the time to uh, make a video or uh, <clears throat> or uh, 
or just write a long comment, I would really appreciate that. Quite frankly, I, because when you look back on the, um, the visions of the 1950s, we just thought the whole time, wow, you know, we, we envisioned, I mean, 2014, you'd think about people floating around in cars in the sky or having magnetic cars, at least, you know, that are uh, floating somewhere off the ground. And this is actually has been achieved to it um, with, um, with limiting uh, degree to limiting degrees, ugh, with limiting degrees of success in um, and with in, I think China with certain kinds of trains. But yeah, this is not what we envisioned. We're still flying subsonic, and I've just been puzzled as to what these limitations are. So let's just get this discussion out in the open. And yeah, this to me is also part of MGTOW. It's not about MGTOW, but this is the kind of discussion that that men enjoy having. And even in my in my ignorance and lack of knowledge of this subject area, I'm, I'm eager to learn to the extent that I can about it um, because I, I, I'm tired of flying subsonic. I mean, uh, so someone who at least once had the privilege of flying from Paris uh, to New York via the Concorde, I mean, that was just pretty freaking awesome. And I know they're just a host of problems. You know, sonic booms are even a problem. Um, the aerodynamics... Uh, as far as I know, structurally, as far as what, uh, what I've read, which, you know, just reading information on the internet, you couldn't get a, 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 an aircraft with a kind of structure of a Boeing 747 um, to go supersonic. Uh, if I forget, just as a total, total layman, looking at things like the SR-71 Blackbird, which they retired after they developed satellites as a, as a spy plane, and all these, all these planes, for lack of a better description, have a sort of a, a very pointy, angular, hawk-like uh, appearance and structure. So hmm. anyway, if you have information or interest in discussing this, this problem, why we're still stuck with subsonic, subsonic commercial air, uh, airplanes and what the problems are uh, to developing supersonic or even hypersonic, um, hypersonic air, 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 aircraft for commercial use, I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments uh, and anything else you might be able to add to this topic and this discussion. Uh, and I am working on something, a big video, a big new video. Um, I'm not quite retiring, not yet, when I still have a few things left to say. But I, my progenitors are in, in Holland right now, so I'm, I'm heading out to probably visit them for about a week next, next week. I haven't seen my progenitors in over three years, so anyway. Yes, please, if you have information or even links that you find very useful and descriptive in helping understand this, this problem with subsonic uh, commercial air, air, aircraft, please uh, share the information. Much appreciated, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.